Hey, hi, hello, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Alex, and you are here at the Farm D Reads, and today we're doing. You guessed it, it is the Book of the Month Backlist Challenge, episode number three. So uh, let's not get, you know, carried away. I am very clearly in my pajamas. I am exhausted. The bags that live under my eyes live under my eyes, but it is now Friday, July 12th. So if you don't know, I am currently in the middle of a challenge, a self-imposed challenge where I let a random wheel generator, AKA the spinning wheel of book of the month death, pick five book of the month backlist reads for me to read within that month. And then by the end of the month, whatever I get done, I have to decide whether I wanna keep it on my shelf or if I want to donate Pango, free little library, whatever. So the bottom two shelves of that bookcase right there are all 65 of my book of the month titles. There's an animal trying to get in, an animal that I own. But yeah, so it is now Friday, July 12th. I'm very, very tired and I completely just poorly, you know, poorly divided my time up, scheduled myself and I absolutely have to pick these five choices so I can get them done because July, what do we have? Like two and a half weeks left in it. So I have some work to do. Let's get to it. So as you can see, um, I have only 55 entries left. So the results are gone, but 55 is correct because I started with 65. This is the third month. 10 books are done. So, um, I'm nervous. All right, let's just do it. Click to spin. Uh. This time next year. I think this is a New Year's romance, perhaps, of some sort, um, which is fine. Whatever. I don't care. It's not anywhere near New Year's, but <sighs> what are you going to do? Okay. Spin again. You know, I'm not even sure that there's anything on here that I'd be like, oh my god, yes. White Horse, okay, this is a Native American horror, I do believe, so I'm actually not displeased about this, so we'll see. That's definitely, out of the two choices, the contender for first book, so let's spin again, number three. I hope you guys enjoy the reaction as much as I enjoy filming this part, because it is actually fun. Shut up. Wait, I am excited about that. Yeah! We got some good ones. We got some good ones. Love on the brain. Okay, I literally just posted my June wrap up and said in that June wrap up that reading not only Bride, but Not in Love by Allie Hazelwood, which is her newest one, like made me love her STEM stuff again. And this is, I think, if I remember correctly, the only STEM slash book of hers that I haven't read. So I'm actually really excited about that. Okay, I take back what I said about not having choices that would excite me. <gasps> Are you ready for the next one, Danny? Okay, let's go. <laughs> you are not alone. I think that's a thriller. So we're definitely continuing our pattern of thriller romance summer book of the month season so whatever I'm down <sighs> I'm actually not upset about these choices so far look at me new boot goofing all right last one last one last one <gasps> I need my emotional support animal she has paperwork so things we do in the dark um Jennifer Hillier I believe another thriller. Okay, so let's check out our results. We have this time next year. We have White Horse, Love on the Brain, You Are Not Alone, Things We Do in the Dark. So we have two romances. We have a horror and we have two thrillers. Um, I am not mad at this at all. This is actually 
I'm gonna go ahead and say it. This is number three. This is three out of, this is the third time that I have done this and this is my favorite month so far. So now I have to decide which one I'm gonna start with. And I'm gonna be honest with you, White Horse is calling to me. So let's go grab the stack, BRB. Let me find them all. Oh my god, I do have this book. I knew I had this. Okay, I just listened to Leave the World Behind by Ruman Alam. I didn't realize that that shitty movie on Netflix by the same name that I did not even make it through because it was so boring is based off of this. I listened to it. Wait, this is a book of the month. Oh shit, so that means I have to take it off the list. <gasps> You naughty girl. Okay, well, I didn't remember that I own this. I, okay, so hear me out. I remembered that this was a book of the month choice and I convinced myself that I didn't own it. Not only that, I was gonna go to the library <laughs> in the, not my library that has been closing early, but a different library that I have a card to, just to pick this up. Anyway, I didn't like it, three stars, and that was generous, maybe 2.5, so, wow, okay. Oh, that upsets me because now, next month, actually, all right, so A Fate Inked in Blood is also on here, and I did read that a couple months ago, so I will leave this here so I remember to take it off, but, that was a side note. Um, I do not recommend this, nor do I recommend the movie. That was the sidebar. Okay, boom, baby. We've got them pulled. I accidentally found a book that I literally just finished today that I will now be removing from the list, along with A Fate Inked in Blood, because I did read that one too. But yeah, I am gonna go ahead and stick with, starting with White Horse. This is by Erica T. Worth. I don't know much about it. I know it's a horror, and I am pretty sure it's, our main character is a Native American woman. I think something's possessed. Yeah. When her cousin Debbie finds an old family bracelet that once belonged to Carrie's mother, it inadvertently calls up both her mother's ghost and a monstrous entity. Yeah, I'm down. My husband and I just put Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone on, so I think those vibes are gonna be top tier for a little horror. I'm shutting down for the night. I will do my best to get a little bit of B-roll this evening, but overall, I am pretty happy about these choices. This one, You Are Not Alone. This is by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekinen, who have written a lot of thrillers that I enjoyed together, but have now split up, and Sarah Pekinen has a current pick on Book of the Month, if I am remembering all of this correctly. So I don't know anything of what this is one is about, but I am very interested because I do like quite a few of their books. Golden Couple I like, I think I have that up there. Oh, I have it somewhere. Maybe I got rid of it. Mm. Well, anyway, we're not gonna talk about that. Um, I do enjoy, I do enjoy them. Yeah, so I'm gonna start with White Horse and then I think evenly kind of go every other for thrillers, romance. I think what my broad spectrum plan is right now after White Horse, this time next year, because out of these two romances, I'm the least excited about this one, because it's not. I'm pretty sure this is a New Year's Eve thing, but I also feel like I've read this. Hold on a minute. No, I don't think I've read this. I am thinking of something that's New Year's eve -y that I've read. I'm gonna double check into that, but anyway. So this time next year, next. And then I think You Are Not Alone, and then Love in the Brain, and then Things We Do in the Dark, so. Hold me to it, fingers crossed. I'm gonna go a crack into this bad boy. Not even 300 pages. Hopefully I get, honestly, I'm really hoping that I just get sucked in and we can crush it this weekend and maybe a couple of other books. So let's get to it, bye. <laughs>
Hello and welcome to me actually updating for once in all of our lives. So it's about two-ish MST and Carl and I are just vibing today. So there's a heat advisory in Denver this weekend. It's like over, it's like in the low hundreds right now. So my husband and I did go run some errands that it was just too hot to videotape, even though one of those errands was the library. So I think maybe that will go in a different video, but I wanted to update on White Horse. So I am just about done. I think I have maybe 60 pages left. Yeah, just about 60 pages left, which I'm going to finish as soon as I am done updating. And you may be asking yourself, why even bother updating if you're just gonna finish it? Well, because I wanna be better at updating, okay? No, seriously though, this is really good. I don't love all of the language choices. I feel like some of the dialogue is a bit immature and the focus on the cousin and her husband and that relationship, I think kind of overshadows what this is about, which is our main character, Carrie, receives a bracelet that used to belong to her mother. Her mom walked out on her when she was just two days old and disappeared. So she kind of like doesn't really want anything to do with the memory of her mom. Her father got into a drunk driving accident and now has brain damage, but the cousin aforementioned gives Carrie a bracelet that belonged to her mom and it is haunted. So I'm really enjoying this. I'm very excited to see how it's gonna end. This is another one that takes place in not only Colorado, but Denver. Like they literally went to an amusement park that I drive by all the time. So again, feeling like a celebrity because I live in the place where this book is taking place. Uh, can someone please out there tell me that they understand what I'm talking about when I say that? It's just, I think very fun to be able to recognize, you know, landmarks or restaurants or amusement parks or things that you're familiar with, you know? I feel like it would feel like seeing a celebrity out like at your coffee shop in your town, but what do I know? Okay, so that's the update on reading. We're gonna finish this. And currently, because it is so hot out, my house has three floors. We do have a finished basement. I am currently on level one, which is our living space, our kitchen, bathroom, you know, whatever. And then we have the upstairs where the library is, guest room, bathroom, our bedroom. I have central air throughout the whole home, but for some reason, it gets super, super cold in the basement. It gets not really very comfortable at all in this level if it's hot out. And then upstairs, forget about it, it is, disgusting how hot it is up there. So that's why you haven't seen a lot of library footage. I apologize. It's just unbearably hot up there. So I ordered a projector and a screen. It will be here this evening. Currently my husband is blowing up our air mattress and I have decided to make an ice cold blanket fort, air mattress, reading tent situation, and then downstairs in the basement where it's actually cold. And then when the projector gets here, we can hook up our Roku, stick to it, and we're gonna either, I think we're gonna watch the newest episode of House of Dragons and also start season five of Yellowstone. We just rewatched just seasons one through four. I've actually never seen four before, so this has all been new. Very excited to see where that craziness goes but yeah for the reading update very much enjoying this and planning to stick to what i said last night and grabbing this time next year bringing that downstairs um i may or may not also bring some additional reading material considering some of my other reads like that i'm in the middle of um and also the holes that i just picked up i'm very excited to get started on so that's the update i will come back later with final thoughts on white horse and maybe an update on whatever i pick up next okay laters
Hello, good morning. Welcome to an update. <laughs> I'm trying to be quiet because my husband is still sleeping, but like he does not wake up. So like I'll get louder, I'm sure, as I start talking about the books as well. But <laughs> Cash never wants to chill. He's just he's a wily one. Okay, so it's now Friday, July 19th. So it is now Friday, July 19th and updating just didn't happen. So this week I went the opposite. I actually took a lot of B-roll, but I didn't do any updating. I did read, however. So I think my last actual talking head portion of this video was when I started it last Sunday. But since then, she did a little damage. So let's start with White Horse because I don't think I talked about it. So White Horse by Erica T. Worth is the first book that the Spinning Wheel of Death picked for me. I think it was the first one this month and or maybe it was just the first one that I wanted to read. That is accurate because this was the first one that I picked up. But this book is about a woman a Native American woman living in Denver, Colorado named Carrie and her cousin who she's best friends with gives her an old bracelet of her mom's that is haunted with a ghost and a monster and Carrie has to try to figure out how to banish these spirits from her because it's literally plaguing they're plaguing her and ruining her life um I absolutely loved this so I ended up giving it four stars I ate it up I think I read it in like two days and again same thing i just love when books take place in an environment that i'm familiar with because i really felt like i could connect with carrie what she was doing where she was going like i could picture it so vividly i mean she literally went to lakeside which is the ricketyest scariest looking amusement park on the outskirts of denver that i've ever seen in my life and i was like first of all bold move second of all i know where that is how fun <laughs> So I don't want to give too much away, but this was fantastic. Again, four stars, really quick read, really fresh, interesting, and important take on horror. Native American horror, I think, is really up and coming. I know that Stephen Graham Jones has so many Native American horror stories, excuse me, novels out there. And now I have read one by Erica T. Worth, and I am very much looking forward to more of them. I am going to keep this. I think this cover is really cool and funky, and I like the colors scheme red black white hell yeah i am gonna keep this on the shelf so first book for the challenge done but wait there's more so i then decided to stick to my plan and i picked up this time next year <laughs> i'm leaving this in so hard okay the next book that i picked up is this time next year by sophie cousins and this is a little what i thought was going to be just like a straightforward rom-com based on the two characters were born at the exact same time on new year's eve in 1989 i believe so they were going to be the first 90s baby no excuse me in yeah in 1990 okay so they're born at midnight 1980. anyway this is actually turning out to be a lot more deep and about relationships and the families that we kind of create around us, what's important to us as far as career versus family and social life. A lot more than just a rom-com, I would say. So I was really, really enjoying this, really, really into it. I mean, I still am, but I haven't picked it up in days. So I'm almost done. I think I have like 100-ish pages left, 203, maybe 120. But yeah, like a little, like, 115 pages left so my plan is to definitely finish this this weekend and that will be two books down for the challenge so the update on this is that i am really enjoying it haven't picked it up have been working on some other reads one of them being this one that sucked up my entire life but just as a little snippet in case you were wondering this is what's actually taking up my life this incredible first of all 1990s original hardcover for Ship of Magic by Robin Hobb, which is book one in the Live Ship Traders. And if you watched my June wrap up, you know that my bestie Allie and I read start to finish the entire Farseer trilogy. And now in July, we're attempting to read the entire Live Ship Traders trilogy, which this is like, I think she said each book is 800 pages. So. <laughs> Hot Girl High Fantasy Summer is continuing. This book is amazing. 
I think I like this trilogy better than Assassin's Apprentice already, but don't tell anyone because a lot of people, aka okay, Ally, disagree with me. Okay, so the thing that actually took up my time was Things We Do in the Dark by Jennifer Hillier, and this is one of the selections for this. I love when I do this. I have so many book of the month bookmarks. It's a not even funny book of the month, please, for the love. My email's below. Feel free to work with me because I love you guys, but I'm bored and I had to pause. Yeah, by the way, again, we're going to talk about this. I think I want to make a whole video about, I don't know, not book subs necessarily, but just like how my book buying habits and my book consumption has changed over the last few months. And like, yeah, a lot of it is being a reasonable adult and knowing that I need to like be better with my money personally. It doesn't matter to me what other people do, but for me personally, I love that I'm saying that and I have these four. These are old, okay? Back off. But I am down to just one current subscription that I'm actively paying for and receiving, and that is the adult fantasy fairy loot. I've paused my book of the month. I can't, I don't have Audible anymore. I haven't had that in a while. I canceled my Everand. I'm honestly considering canceling my Kindle Unlimited unless somebody convinces me, but I think that it was Jess from Books After Bedtime, which is one of my favorite new channels. I will leave down below. She's delightful and focuses on LGBTQIA plus literature. I have gotten some great recommendations from her, but I think she was talking about Kindle Unlimited being just like so mid and a lot of those reads being just like fluffy things that we use, you know, to like read in between some other things. And I started out using Kindle Unlimited that way, but I have found that I am just so much more drawn to Libby and borrowing on my Kindle. I, I mean, I'll, I'll borrow, like I have a whole, you know, set of 20 bucks on my Kindle Unlimited shelf, but I'm not interested in reading a single one of them. So that's up to $13 a month now. What's 13 times 12? Like 160 something, 150 something. That's a lot of money in here. You know, um, I have a medical bill right now from when I had to go to the freaking ER for my back. $150. So, you know, when you think about things that way, for me, just right now, where I'm, again, this is just me where I'm at in my life right now. Anyway, all that to say, I'm thinking about making a video about what I'm currently doing for, like, you know, borrowing, buying book subscriptions. I don't know what I'm gonna call it, just like my book ramblings 2024. But anyway, how long winded of me, as per usual. Okay. <laughs> So Things We Do in the Dark by Jennifer Hillier is again one of the books that I picked for this challenge and I was thinking to myself when I started the challenge, why am I treating this challenge like I can't be reading multiples of these? Like it's only five books at a time. I love to read multiple books at a time. I typically have anywhere from three to five. I like three, that's my happy place, but I'll go up to five. I think I have four <laughs> that I currently have open right now. but. So I went ahead and borrowed this on Libby. I got my, the Kindle version and the audiobook, and then I have the physical. So I was able to keep this copy at home and listen to the, I pretty much mostly listen to it on audio, TBH, driving to and from work this week. The narrator was fantastic. It was really fun to listen to. And I don't even know where to start with this. So I think this may be my new favorite thriller that I've ever read. I gave it a four star on Goodreads, but it's really leaning closer to a 4.5, 4.75. And the only reason that I'm not giving it five stars is in my personal opinion, I don't know if it was the audiobook because, oh my God, why is there another one? Ugh, I'm telling you, Dragon Hoarder. Okay, this is not a very long book when you look at it in terms of the physical copy, but I just felt like listening to it on audio, it would not end. It was so long-winded at some points and i was like guessing the twists and turns which is fine i don't mind that i don't knock a book down for that because i think it's fun but once i figured out a number of the reveals i was like where is this going where is this going and it just kept going and going but then it paid off at the end so this is me telling you to absolutely pick this up <sighs> how to talk about this with no spoilers this was wild so it mainly follows a few different timelines of a story stemming from a mother daughter incredibly toxic abusive relationship mom ruby reyes 
is an abusive mom to her daughter Joey and Ruby is in the current day getting released from prison after 25 years for she was in prison for murdering her older white man lover that she was having an affair with and we are now hearing about this from Drew who is making a podcast his podcast about Ruby Reyes and I think I'm gonna leave it there that was a pretty good way of me telling you what this was mostly about without telling you anything of what it was about I loved this I I, I don't want to spoil it because it was so so good again like I guessed one of the big reveals and you know I guessed it I was like this is being really obvious but I don't know if it was being really obvious on purpose to set it up for things that happen later but I absolutely love this again 4.5 4.75 I think this might be a new favorite thriller for me and funnily enough when I checked it off on Goodreads I have read something else by this author it's called Jar of Hearts and I think I only gave it three stars I don't remember loving it even though a lot of people like that one by her but this one if you're gonna read Jennifer Hillier please start with this one it was immaculate amazing no complaints for me other than the pacing slash length of it and definitely like no doubt about it this one is staying on the shelf too i would recommend this a million times over i would read it again physically for sure as a thriller which is weird to like know what's gonna happen but this one was again so much more it's about toxic family relationships especially with mothers which your girl has one sometimes it's hard for me to read about them sometimes it's very for the majority it was hard for me to read about it and then it was very enjoyable for me to read about it so <laughs> that's the update and these are the two freaking book of the month things that i found also i love this one because i have a little crystal ball that's dope so finish this and we still have two more books we have love on the brain by ali hazelwood and we have you are not alone by greer hendrix and sarah pekinen which i do have on audio i may very well start today on the drive to work so those are the updates i'll be back later this weekend and so discovered a young lady ate one of the skellies but on the positive, I now have his creepy little hands to put somewhere. Did you eat my skeleton? Did you eat that? I know you're so sorry. Were you just anxious? Yeah, it's okay. I eat stuff when I'm anxious too. It's just a girl. It's okay. It's okay. Just don't swallow that. Okay? Sean's bedroom door opens. He quickly gathers the tulips as his girlfriend Joey walks into the kitchen. Good morning, she says, stretching. She's wearing a pair of Sean's boxers, which are almost covered by one of his big hoodies. Her curly hair is up in high ponytail, and her toenails are painted bright pink. Sean gives her the tulips and a kiss. I quickly turn away, busying myself opening the fridge and pouring almond milk into my travel mug. Hey friends, hi, hello, welcome to another update. Oh boy, all right, let's try that again. We're back. I have the most interesting update ever, and that is that I still haven't finished this time next year, but I did start and finish one of the other ones. So I ended up starting and finishing You Are Not Alone by Gurr Hendricks and Sarah Pekinen. I was able to get the audiobook off Libby and also the Kindle version. So I was kind of like switching. Well, now I have the Schwab on here, but I was kind of switching back and forth between the audio and my Kindle version. I actually never even picked up my physical copy but so this one started and finished this is from 2020 so as someone kindly pointed out in my last video i can't do math which is true that they were correct in my last video i was like 2018 i've been carrying this around for four years six years i'm a doctor it's fine though i have a calculator at work yeah this one i have been carrying around for four years and Let's talk about it. So I have read a couple other books by this duo author pair and it's been quite some time. It's been years, I would say. I just, I feel like I'm a broken record about it, but I just don't gravitate towards thrillers as much as I used to, which is the point of this whole book of the month challenge to try to clear my shelves of some things that I'm not like super pumped to read. So this was okay. I enjoyed the audiobook. So this follows a few different POVs of a bunch of different women, which 
got super confusing. So our main character is Shay. She's a data analyst statistician. She lives with this guy, Sean, who she's secretly in love with, but he has a girlfriend. And Shay just finds herself, she's just kind of lonely. She doesn't really do too much. So she ends up in the subway one day and witnesses something terrible. Because of that thing that happens in the subway, these women become like Shay becomes embroiled in this 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 group of women. And I don't really want to say too much more about that because it gets, you know, classic thriller twisty turny. I ended up okay, so I ended up giving this three stars and although I enjoyed it, I just thought how many female characters there were and their POVs that we were getting and just all the flip-flopping back and forth. I was like, who is this? What is going on? What did she do? Wait, this is the wrong girl. And now I have her confused with this other girl. That could very well just be a me problem as per usual, but especially with the audiobook listening along, I was just kind of like confused here and there. And then the ending I did like quite a bit. So that kind of brought me back. But overall, I don't find anything about this to be memorable. I don't think I'm gonna keep it on the shelves, which is, as we know, the other part of this challenge. So yeah, I don't find anything about this cover enjoyable. Real people on covers kind of weirds me out. So uh, yeah, this was good. Three stars. It was a quick read, I will say that. But again, that like multiple female POV, time, the timelines, it kind of messed with the pacing a little bit in the end there, but the ending, excuse me in the middle but the ending was pretty good so i mean would i recommend this sure if you want something twisty turny um girl power i'm 99 sure a bird just flew in the window but i'll check the footage later <laughs> yeah so you are not alone by Gary hendrix and sarah peckin in three stars probably going to unhaul from the shelves but as always we will do our final thoughts at the end so that makes three books down for this challenge guys and I still have an entire week left of July. I think I'm doing pretty good, a little over a week. So my plan for today is I did read a little bit more of this yesterday and kind of got myself immersed back into this world because I hadn't picked this up since I started the challenge last Sunday. So it's now Sunday, the next one. It's been a week. It's been one week since you looked at me. I think I have like 60 pages left of this. Let's say like 80. Okay, I have about 80 pages left of this time next year, so I definitely think that I will be able to finish this. And then that just leaves what I think I saved for Best for Last, which is Love on the Brain by Allie Hazelwood. Very excited for that. So I think my plan is finish this one today. We'll talk about it later. Perhaps I'll bring you throughout my Sunday. And then I will start Love on the Brain this week, and then we'll be done with the July episode of Book of the Month Backlist Challenge. I just am so happy that so many of you are here because of the, this challenge that I'm doing because like low key it kind of does stress me out because I mean seriously some of these books have been carrying around four or five six years and like if you haven't read it in four or five or six years kind of means something right you're not into it but I'm just loving how many challenges are on booktube or like people are on booktube just like focusing on reading their tbrs I think that's really great in this world of overconsumption, which I am definitely clearly part of the problem I will say this is this fiasco is we're gonna do that next and, and we'll talk about that a little bit but I've just been really enjoying this challenge and talking to you guys about these book of the month books and you know how nice it is to actually be reading books that I've already purchased that are on my shelves and I have still been successful in using the library as well I think I have included at this point some b-roll of me going to the library maybe for other unrelated things unsure editing me think about it those are just my thoughts I still haven't bought a book I actually oh my god I haven't bought a book since June so July has almost been my I think if I make it through the end of July without purchasing a book which no problem everything's expensive this will be the first time I've done a no buy month since in the history of me existing and reading books so that's exciting I am proud of that um I'm not the type of person hold please coffee I'm wet. Great. I'm not the type of person that no buys like with books. If there's 
I don't regret any of the book purchases that you've seen on my shelves. I don't regret any of these book of the months. I don't. I have been an avid reader since childhood. I think it's incredible that people, men, women, so many people like my age, younger, older, were all like in the social media space. We love to read. It's almost like cool to read again, which I just think it's so amazing. So like, I'm never gonna regret purchasing the written word. I don't care if it's a one star. I don't care if I DNF it. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Like books are just always have been always will be very precious and important and special to me. I regret nothing ever, 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 not even a letter. And now <laughs> we're gonna deal with this back because honestly, I'm just sick of looking at it. I was trying to save it for like, um, like a more vlog type of video but there's again so many people watching these challenges that I'm doing I thought maybe you'd like an unboxing so let's talk about what we have here because <laughs> I feel like I've been hinting about like my subscription box statuses and, and whatnot so let's talk about it I am down to one active book box subscription and that is the adult fairy loot my FOMO just can't let it go Wait, no, I think I did. No, I did. I may have one more adult fairy loot box coming, but then I I think I paid through July, but I may have canceled it, so I may be done. Colorado's very expensive to live here. I, you know, I just, and Sarah from Wicked Reading honestly gave me the strength that I needed to do this because she made so many good points about the FOMO. Like, it's so real. You know, you, and it's that hit of dopamine when you got off the wait list and then when you get the email that it's shipped and then you get the notification that it's there and then we get to do these unboxings. Yeah, that's all fun and well, but let's, these two I purchased myself from Pango because that's another thing we're gonna talk about. Buying used. I just, feel like as a 32 year old adult I want to do better about living within my means and thinking about you know just like not spending so not frivolously because I don't think book box subscriptions or books again I don't think any of these are frivolous purchases for me the thing is is if you live if you're living above your means you're gonna run into a problem so I just I just took a step back and thought about, listen, if you're gonna spend, there's three books in here, one, two, three, four fairy loot boxes. And again, one of these fairy loot boxes is not for me, which we'll talk about, but this is what, seven books and each box subscription, the fairy loots are like 35 to $40 a piece because they ship from the UK. So, I mean, yeah, you get this beautiful book, but let's, let's be real. I have a whole shelf of special editions up there from fairy loot. Haven't read a single one of them. They're gorge. They make a beautiful display shelf. What's done is done with that damage. But I just have decided let's take the step of not spending money on books that like just, you know, they look pretty. We're not going to read them necessarily. And let's take that, you know, $100, $200. And I could legit buy so much shit on Pango. It's not even funny. So that's just, that's just a little spiel about me, my budgeting. I just you know i want to be more thoughtful about the books that i'm buying that's the short and long of it okay so <laughs> let's do this unboxing so let's start with our babes book of the month so book of the month if there's any way shape or form that you're watching i'd love to work with you because i love you guys but this is my last box for a while so i have three credits stacked up because i wasn't super loving the most recent choices and <clears throat> I decided to pause. I didn't cancel my membership because I have for six years. So it just, I don't want to cancel it all the way. I'm not ready yet. But if y'all are watching, I'll work with you. A show. So I used my last three credits to finish her off. And I've paused. So you can pause for three months. I'm going to pause for three months and then see how I feel. Maybe my goals of this channel blowing up and getting a book of the month sponsorship, which is actually like, I'm not joking. That's a dream of mine because I have had book of the month since 2018. I mean, I remember like hearing, like I remember like reading an article that was like, check out this new brand new book subscription service. Like I was with book of the month when they started. Okay. Just want you guys to know that. So 
The way that I'm excited for this one is not even funny. So the first book that I chose is The God of the Woods by Liz Moore. And the number one reason is because it is Liz Moore, who is the author of Long Bright River. I'm going to be embarrassed. Yeah. Long Bright River, which I got from Book of the Month. That one might be, that's maybe like a 2018, 2019 one. And it's one of my favorite books of all time. It is so dark and raw and just, I think about it often still. That's actually on, I really want to also start rereading favorites more often throughout the years. And that's one of them. So I don't know what this is about. I picked it because it's Liz Moore and I don't know that she's written anything since Long Bright River. I also love how fat it is and I actually do love the cover and the pink, this little pink drip with the matching pink book of the month. I think that's very, very cute. So super excited to read this. And now I have a question for you guys and I would really love some responses in the comments if you please. Do you think I should add these three? <laughs> Do you think I should be adding any new book of the month books to this challenge or should we just keep going forward with the 65 that I have been carting around? Because I'm, I want to read this. So I think I'll get to it soon. But let me know in the comments if you think I should be adding any more books to the challenge as I get them for book of the month backlist or if the new books can just be the new books. Holy cannoli, this one's big too. Wow. Okay, so the next book that I got is All the Colors of the Dark by Chris Whitaker. And I don't know what this is about yet. Hold on. Soaring thriller and an epic love story that spans. A missing person mystery, a serial killer thriller, a love story, a unique twist on each. All the Colors of the Dark is about what looks in the shadows of obsession and the blinding light of hope. Great. Love, love story serial killers. Say less. This seems to be just like a hot selection. Um, a lot of people on Bookstagram that I follow chose this book for their book of the month. And I had a little bit of FOMO. I actually really, really do like this cover as well, though. And Chris Whitaker has been on my new authors to get into list for quite some time. I think I have an arc on my Kindle that I never read by him, but my gosh, this is fat too. This is the fattest book of the bump box I've ever got. I might save this one. Okay, and lastly we have, I'm actually disappointed that I got this so late, but you know what time it is, it's summer. So that means Riley Sager. I have all of Riley Sager's books, but for one, this one's going to be no different. This is Middle of the Night. This is Riley's newest release. He is one of my auto buy favorite authors of all time, and I definitely don't know what this one's about, but I'll give you guys a small, a small tidbit. A man must contend with the long ago disappearance of his childhood best friend and the secrets lurking just beyond the safe confines of his picture perfect neighborhood. Hey, so POV from a male character, I feel he... Riley, okay, interesting. I feel like Riley Sager's books, if I'm remembering correctly, like mostly follow female main characters. This is male main character. I don't think we need to talk about how good this cover is with the neon. I mean, this is so up my alley. It's not even that funny. So yeah, very excited for this package. Hey, new, I don't like them. That's okay. It was bound to happen, but it's a submission from a person so that's cool okay also why did I only get one I bought three books it's fine I'll still work with you guys okay that was the book of the month I immediately lost the pocket knife that's dangerous okay we're good all right that was my last book of the month for a little bit so let's get these stacked somewhere all right on the floor all right Let's get started with these. So I have four fairy loots here. I don't know how far back they go. I've just been hoarding them for a point in this video that I could talk about them. One of these is the special order of Ruthless Vows by Rebecca Ross, which I purchased for my friend to send to her. She like Venmoed me the money because she really wanted it. I gave her my copy of Divine Rivals. Please no one come at me. That is number one on my list of popular books that I could not possibly give less shits about to read. So let's start. So all that to say, one of these is going to be not for me, but 
I don't remember that I've had any spoilers, so I don't really know what's gonna be up in here. I won't miss these freaking packing peanuts. Let's start there. They're kind of cute. The Temptation of Magic YA. So this might be one of my last May YA because I canceled that quite some time ago. The Temptation of Magic by Megan Scott. Atmospheric and with a dark academia setting, this is the thrilling story of a girl with the ability to overpower supernaturals. All right, cool, cool beans. I hate when they're upside down sometimes and then I open. Boring, <laughs> like, oh, that's pretty though. All right. Edges are very pretty, but other than that, mm, I do like the sides. It almost gives like a Penguin Random House Classics. Or no, is that what I'm thinking? No, not Penguin Random House Classic. Like just a classics type of type of vibe. Let's see. Mmm. That's hot. What's going on there? I probably can't show that on the camera, huh? We got some end papers. Ooh, very pretty naked. I do like that. Nice gold foiling. I like how the end papers have gold foiling too. Mermaid. I'm not bad at this. This looks interesting. I might actually read this. So, YA. I definitely canceled this one. So, maybe the other two are the adults. I'm not a hundo p sure. But we're going to find out. All right, moving on. I feel like since I've canceled this, I'm like so lackluster about opening them now. This is what I'm talking about though. I haven't heard about that book ever in my life. So like, yeah, I have like a pretty cool version of it, but that cost me what, $40? I could have bought three books on paying over $40 that I actually wanted. So anyway, I'm just thinking about what I want, what is important to me. The God and the Gumiho by Sophie Kim. This is the June adult, okay? A story of a meddlesome nine-tailed fox who must team up with a handsome exiled trickster god to chase down a powerful demon. What? <laughs> That's so fever dreamy. I'm in. All right. I'm very excited if there's going to be a bunch of uh, Japanese cherry blossoms on this cover. I'm going to be pretty pumped, actually. So. What do we got? Ooh, it feels so nice. Where's your nine tails? How fun. This is pretty cool. I like this. I like those edges quite a lot. It, oh God, this, I love when the book covers have that like nice, nice feeling to them. Cute end papers. So the fox is a girl, obviously, right? Okay. So we're getting maybe some like Japanese, uh, demonology I think and this is the route that we're gonna go which I know nothing about but I am into here's the cherry blossoms pretty <gasps> I high key wish that they had done cherry blossoms all the way around instead of that coffee cup I guess but I mean you guys know I love coffee so that's fine this naked edition is stunning not mad at this one okay reversible dust jacket I like the other side I like the side that it's on so we're just gonna move along all right I'm not being very fun and exciting and talkative throughout this but it's just hard cottage core the Honey Witch, May 2024 by Sydney Shields. Okay, I have been seeing this everywhere and the original cover is gorgeous. So this is a wonderfully heartwarming romance with a beautiful cottage witch setting. The story follows Marigold, a girl training to become the next Honey Witch and a grumpy magic skeptic. Skeptic in a tale? That's not how you spell it though. So it's S-C-E-P-T-I-C. -E so I read it as septic. <laughs> That's funny. I already know this is gonna be absolutely out of this world unreal because the original cover of the honey, which is so good. 
and I did it in complete darkness. Now it's too dark in here. All right, that's a little bit better. Holy cannoli. This is gorge. And it's sapphic. Oh. See, and then, oh, look at this tiny little bee right there. Oh, he's so cute. Oh, bees. My best friend has beehives, so she's going to be super jealous when I send her a picture of this. This is absolutely beautiful. Increíble. Beautiful reversible, beautiful naked. Let's keep it going. This is gorgeous. I am very excited for this. I'm quite happy that I kept my... Wow. I kept my subscription long enough to get this. So thanks, Barry Lou. Wow. I have avoided picking this up just I don't know if I'm like a cozy witchy girl I'm more of like a violent witchy girl personally but this is too beautiful to not read and I think I will wait until maybe we're a little bit closer to like fall but it's still summertime I think that will be perfect for this okay hey cash money so lastly this is probably my friends but just to double check yep it is I'm not going to open it and show you guys. You can Google it. It's not mine. I don't want to touch it. So that stays there. Okay. Now these are Pango purchases that I made. And one of them is kind of funny. I don't remember which one. Oh, that's my address directly. Uh, pocket knife. Nice and packaged. Thanks, girlfriend. I love Pango. I swear, people send you stuff so fast, and it's honestly given me the scrunk to start a Pango. Maybe today. Speaking of money, Cash, you want bubble wrap? Oh, pristine. This is like literally brand new. Are you kidding me? Incredible. Okay, so. I recently read A Fate Inked in Blood by Danielle L. Jensen and absolutely loved it, but I had the Book of the Month copy, and I actually do also have a special edition fairy loot of it, which not mad about, but I didn't have once. Why am I like this? She says that she's worried about spending money, and then she, with of her own volition, has three copies of exact same book oh my god i couldn't stop ripping okay i had to have this the seller only charged me 18 dollars plus the shipping which i think for secondhand purchasing and what good condition it's in i'm very happy with this so i just really wanted these edges because if you go on if you go on pango there's some biddies that are selling this version for quite a bit more than 18 dollars so thank you to the girl that sold me this for 18 dollars and for how nice of an addition it is and for how nicely you packaged it for me you're a real one so i got that and then this one allie was like do you we were talking about buddy reading something because we've been just buddy reading robin hob like crazy but she asked me if I was gonna buddy read Malice, she was talking about, she said Malice. So I was thinking Malice by John Gwynn. <laughs> and she was talking about an education in Malice by S.T. Gibson, that new one that she just came out with, which, yeah, maybe I'll read it. But anyway, before clarifying, I just went ahead and purchased a copy of Malice by John Gwynn, which is what this is. I'm not mad about it. I love John Gwynn. I wanna read it. Oh my God. And I've actually, been thinking about starting this. Jeez Louise, you did good too, girl. Sweet Jesus. There we go. All right. Ooh, I'll save this. A little bit of recycled paper. We love to see it. Wait, is this hardcover? No. There's no way. 
It was too cheap. Dallas by John Quinn. This is just the beginning to, I think, another trilogy by, yeah, The Faithful and the Fallen One. I read, was it this year or last year? I don't recall now, but anyway, I made my first foray into John Gwynn recently within the last year. I read The Shadow of the Gods and The Hunger of the Gods and The Fury of the Gods comes out in October. So excited. But a happy little accident. <laughs> she meant, my friend meant a completely different book and my dumbass went ahead and purchased this one. But again, not mad about it. So happy to be buying second hand, happy to be saving a little bit of money. And this one's in great condition as well. You know, when you think about it, so many people just, you know, they buy a book and they read it once and then they don't touch it again. And then you get to benefit from that. So if you're not on Pango, get on there. Cause I think being able to buy, you know, great condition books second hand is just such a wonderful way to do better for our planet and do better for our bank accounts. So with that, we're done. I've been recording for 30 minutes straight and I'm going to cry. I am gonna recon reconfigure my, my placement here in the house. I'm gonna go down to the basement and hang out with my husband and try to finish this time next year. I also am planning on starting Mad Ship, which I will show you guys because it's absolutely epic. It's book two of the Live Ship Traders series by Robin Hobb. The lighting is bad again on the bookshelf. So what are you going to do? But this is book two. Um, Robin Hobb has just absolutely been taking over my life. So I've got that going for me. I also started Love Letters to a Serial Killer, the audiobook, while I was crocheting yesterday. So we could do some of that. And then I also am working on, here we go. I'm also working on A Gathering of Shadows by V.E. Schwab, which is book two of a Darker Shades of Magic trilogy. So I'll check in in a little bit. I'm gonna clean up my mess that I've made here, unboxing things with you guys, and we will chat again later. Okay, bye. the end of July and we're updating. As per usual, didn't do a lot of updating this week. I currently have a headache because I'm out of coffee. I need to do an order of Nespresso pods. The only pods that I had left, have left, are iced coffee ones and I am classically like, I like hot coffee in the morning, okay? I don't care if it's summer. I don't care if it's winter. I don't care. I like hot coffee in the morning and I like iced coffee the rest of the day. So anywho, long winded of me as always, I had only a decaf coffee today <laughs> and I think I have a headache because of that. So I'm either going to go in my basement and take a nap on the air mattress and or have an iced coffee and try to get rid of this headache. Um, I took some Tylenol, so hopefully that will kick in. But before I do nothing for the rest of the day, also, we went to the Museum of Science in Denver this morning and it was so cool. They have a poisons exhibit. It's like their special exhibit right now and it was really, really cool. We got there early 
and then like all the crowds with the kids showed up and i was like we gotta go so i've just been reading since then i finished mad ship by robin hobb that's besides the point this is my book of the month vlog oh my god i'm like forgetting what i'm doing anywho the update is i did finish this time next year by sophie cousins i'm 99 percent sure i haven't updated since then but editing me if you did good job you did it twice so this book follows our main character Minnie and the premise is she was born on New Year's Eve 1999 nope 1989 so she was going to become like the first 90s baby and her mom gives birth in the same room as this other mom and that mom steals Minnie's name which is Quinn so that mom names her son Quinn so Minnie is born at the exact same time as Quinn. This book follows their current timeline where they have met in real life and in real life, like there would be any other kind of life. So the characters Quinn and Minnie have met it's like 2020 and then we also get snippets of times throughout their lives where they've been at the same place at the same time like come across each other and kind of not known it so the whole premise is like you know they're each other's soulmates but always the wrong place and the wrong time and it's because of this situation that their moms were in when they gave birth to the respective characters but anywho i mostly liked this i thought the first half had a lot better pacing than the second half and again this was another week i feel like every week i'm like it was a hard week at work they're all they're all hard they're all hard not in a bad way it's just i'm still wrapping my head around a lot of parts of my new position and it exhausts me at the end of the day so i just didn't feel like reading this so anyway all that to say i ended up giving it three stars it felt like it was gonna be a four star but then the second half i felt and again i don't know if it was because like i took a little break in between or whatever but i felt like the second half the pacing was slow sloggy didn't care anymore and their banter was really cringy <laughs> like there's this is not a spicy book if you're looking for more of like a um slice of life feel good uh, rom com -y, contemporary romance this is more your vibe this has zero spice i would say whatsoever <laughs> smells good why does this smell so good it's not like book smell it smells like like perfume hmm I might have to reconsider keeping this for the smells. I f like the back of the cover more than I like the front, like just all the little stars and not these characters. I'm not doing a very good job of talking about this book at all. And I think that just speaks to the three star-ish quality that it possesses. So this was fine. It was mid, I don't know. Yeah, it was all right. <laughs> Do I think I'm gonna keep this on the shelf? No. If I'm sitting here struggling to uh, come up with anything else to say about it, other than it was three stars, yeah, it's gonna go. Um, not my, not my particular type of romance. Honestly, the it was the banter. The there was this weird part where they were like play fighting on the couch and it went on too long and he puts a banana in her mouth and we're supposed to think it's sexual and cute it's not it's fucking weird but that's out of here okay so we're moving on that was three stars that was book number four for this july episode of let's read all 65 of my book of the month books so which now i have more because i just bought I used my last three credits that i had before i paused it okay we have the last book for july and for some reason last weekend even though it was like still pretty close to the end of july I convinced myself i had a lot more time than i actually do to read this i need to read this by wednesday i think is august 1st which it's ally hazelwood we're gonna eat this sucker up so i am pretty sure that love on the brain by ally hazelwood is my last book to read of her canon after i have read this i will be caught up with ally hazelwood i just read not in love in june i think and i really really liked it and then i was thinking about it and i was like she has a lot of titles that have the word love in it love on the brain love theoretically not in love we could we could come up with something else at this point in time am i still gonna buy every single book she comes out with and eat it up yes yes i am although her stem can be a like her stem trope 
you know, bit that she does can get a little old every once in a while. I don't know, Not In Love kind of reinvigorated me and then Love Theoretically, I listened on audio in maybe April or May and I really, really enjoyed that. So I'm very much looking forward to reading this TBH. I saved this for the end on a porpoise. So it's Saturday, July 27th. My plans for the weekend are read this book, hopefully nothing else. I need to do a grocery pickup later today. I do have a hold at the library. It's nonfiction, it's boring. It's The Psychology of Money by somebody. And I just, I do enjoy nonfiction and I typically read more nonfiction than I have this year, which is Big Fat Zero. So I have some nonfic books that I wanna get to. Um, if that's not your jam, that's fine. I may or may not talk about them on here. I know that's not for everybody, but for my own personal growth and learning and edification, that is the hole that I have to go pick up at the library this weekend. I don't know if I feel like going today. Um, if I can get this grocery pickup done and like pick up a bowl around around or before five, which I doubt because it's 142 right now, maybe I'll go to the library and browse but i feel like i have plenty that i can be reading here so i don't know i'm just feeling this headache is kind of really killing my vibe so i think i'm just gonna chill i do also want to do quite a bit of content i really want to be a person that is able to batch content i'm not i'm more of a fly by the seat of my pants type of content creator which is kind of how I live my life personally anyway. And it's worked out for 32 years, so why change it now? But I feel like this weekend I wanna do some stuff. So I'm thinking about recording a couple of vids. Um, one of them I wanna do the mid-year freakout tag that has been going around. I think that's pretty fun to kind of take a look back at what I've read and maybe kind of like do a little assessment and see what books we can bring back to the forefront of our minds from this past year so far. So that's one thought. And then I also thought I have like a very good vibe going in the library, the shelving lights working for me, just everything is working. So I thought I would do a little bookshelf tour, just kind of show how I have my books organized. I like watching other people's bookshelf tours. Um, so I thought that could be fun. Haven't done that ever. So those are my T's and P's. Staying hydrated as always. I kind of hope it like gets gross and rains. It's nice by the window. It's sunny, cloudy-ish. Cloudy with a chance of me taking a nap. So that's the update. I don't know what this weekend is gonna bring, honestly, but um, I also wanna be a person that vlogs more. I just find it, I just, I don't know what it is. There's a blockade between me and putting this camera up. So I need to start smaller. I think I keep trying to do like a weekly vlog or whatever, and I just don't think I'm there yet. Work-life balance, I don't have it quite yet. I think I need to do like weekend reading vlogs. So maybe next weekend, that's what I'll do. Not like a challenge necessarily, but just like come hang out with me and read for the weekend. So I don't know, whatever. Tell me what you guys like to see. Like what are your favorite types of bookish videos? I love a good reading vlog. I like both. I like to see what people are up to and then what they're reading, just like putting on a video like that low maybe like have an airpod in with some music and you know, some instrumentals good book that's a solid relaxing time in fact i think i'm gonna do that right now so and i think i'm gonna go make a coffee an iced coffee and let it sit in the freezer for like 10 minutes um i need to get one of those like coffee chiller things my boss told me about them and i honestly thought they were like 45 dollars but they're literally like 11.99 on amazon so i need to get one of those I'm babbling now. Okay, I think I am going to settle in with love on the brain and drink a coffee and try to get rid of this headache and continue this weekend. Okay, I'll update later. Bye. Hey, can you leave
Hey friends, I don't know how this light is, so it doesn't matter. We're just gonna roll with it. All right, we are done. It's July 30th, one day left of the month, and I finished all five books. So you know what? Let me go grab, ooh, <laughs> literally only grabbed Love on the Brain. Like I was only gonna talk about this and not just like wrap up the whole video. But anyhow, I did finish Love on the Brain by Allie Hazelwood. I actually finished this yesterday, I think. I think I took a little bit of, my intent was I took some B-roll and then I was like, do an update and then finish the rest of the book. And then I was too lazy to get up and come up here and do an update. So I did finish this and I loved it. I gave it four stars on Goodreads, but I'm leaning more towards like a 4.25, I think is a very accurate star description of how I feel about this book. Is it my favorite? No. I still think my favorite is Not In Love, TBH. I don't know. I might have to do a tier ranking because Allie Hazelwood, again, is just one of the fewer, you know, mainstream romance authors that I really do like her work. And I think it's amazing that she pivoted from the STEM to like the long content STEM, then she did the STEM novellas, and then she did Bride, which is paranormal Omegaverse, which I think is also gonna have a sequel, so she's gonna continue. And I hope she does because I love Bride. And then she comes back to like STEM and Not In Love, but Not In Love is way more raw, less rom-com, a lot spicier. But yeah, I absolutely love this. I ate it up. So the two main characters are Levi is the man and B is the female love interest. They are both scientists. They went to the same school and she always thought that he absolutely hated her and like everyone that they went to school with also thought that he hated her. They now find themselves like many years later as adults in their respective careers being forced to work together with their teams at NASA to develop this like helmet for the astronauts and it goes from there and it's so good it was not heavy on the spice but I thought that the love scenes were just like so romantic and so lush and so well written yeah I don't know I love Allie Hazelwood I honestly can't think of one of her books that I've given less than four stars I would have to think about it I think I'm gonna do a tier ranking situation I've seen quite a few videos reels on Instagram of people posting their tier rankings of like auto buy authors or favorite authors and Allie Hazelwood is dare I say one of my favorite auto buy authors there you go all right 4.25 definitely recommend pick this one up or any of Allie Hazelwood's honestly at this point point. and as far as the challenge goes this is definitely staying on the shelves so that was the last book let's do a quick quick recap start to finish so the first book that I had finished was White Horse by Erica T. Worth I gave this four stars this is an indigenous this is an indigenous horror following our main character Carrie who inherits a haunted bracelet of her now deceased mothers and she's now being haunted by a couple of different spirits and this takes place in and around Denver Colorado which I always think is really fun because I live around here so it was really really cool to be able to picture so clearly where the characters were what Carrie was doing who she was doing it with like the vibes were immaculate I would honestly save this for your fall TBR it felt a little bit out of place reading it in the summer but four stars still the writing was really great and I'm looking forward to anything by this future author so we're keeping this so that's two that we're keeping that's pretty pretty good Okay, what was the next one? This one. Hey, Dan. The next book that I finished. <laughs> Honestly, we should all be surprised that that squeaker is still in that toy. The next book that I finished is Things We Do in the Dark by Jennifer Hillier. This is a, let me remind myself. Oh yeah, and you know what? Actually, I ended up listening to this on audiobook. I was able to get it off Libby. So I don't think that I cracked the physical book at all, to be honest. So this is still a fresh book. I loved this. So this one follows our main character, Paris Peralta, who is accused of murdering her husband, who is this famous actor comedian, but he's like 40 years older than her. So it's a very sus kind of marriage murder situation. And then we start getting POVs of another character in a different timeline in Canada. And then of course things happen, timelines converge, yada, yada, yada. Okay, the way that this is set up, I now think Jennifer Hillier wrote it in a way that you are meant to predict what's gonna happen because there's so much more story to tell after that big reveal. I just thought this was so well written and ended up being like just so much more than a thriller. It was about found family and the things that we do to survive. My goodness, check your trigger warnings. This was a lot darker than I thought it was gonna be. Like it is very much things we do in the dark. So check, check your trigger warnings. There 
there is SA, there is heavy child abuse, of course, murder, murder, suicide, things like that mentioned. So, but besides, you know, those topics, you know, if this book still sounds like it's your jam, I do recommend. I think I gave it four stars on Goodreads, but I'm honestly now thinking it's leaning more towards a 4.5. This is one of the better thrillers that I think I've ever read, and I'm very much looking forward to reading more by her. Funnily enough, I actually read, I think Jennifer Hillier is Jar of Hearts, and I did not like it anywhere near as much as this. So hopefully any books that I pick up by her that I haven't read yet give me the same feelings that things we do in the dark did. Uh, okay, the next book that I read is You Are Not Alone, and this is by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekinen, who have a number of books written together and now are also publishing books just on their own. I think Sarah Pekinen has one that hers was the July book of the month, I think. I didn't get it. Y'all saw what I picked out, which I'm very excited about. And again, please don't forget, someone tell me in the comments, just one person, I don't care. Should I be adding new the new book of the month? I think I have like four that I have acquired since I started this challenge. Do they go on this list or are they separate because they're not backlogged, they're new? Just one person tell me what to do and I'll do it. Great. This one is another deranged female girl power thriller. Kind of almost like things we do in the dark but a lot more clicky. So you get a couple of POVs, you get Shay Miller and then you also get the Moore sisters and honestly they those two timelines converge and you kind of see you know as it progresses the connections and then the reveals etc etc. This one was okay. I only gave it three stars. I think you can tell by like my very lackluster description of it. Three stars. It was okay. I've read a couple other ones by this duo that I liked more. The Golden Couple being one of them. If you were going to pick up something by this duo, I would recommend that one over this one. So I'm probably not going to keep it. I also am not a huge fan of this cover, so I don't see any reason to keep this. So that's gonna go and then the most recent one other than love on the brain is this time next year by sophie cousins this is a very cute emotional rom-com following our main female character minnie and our main male character quinn who were both born at the exact same time on the same night in the same hospital room in 1989 and their moms were like vying to be the first ones to have the baby to win this competition that it was going to be the first 90s baby born in london and it ends up that one of the moms stole the name so minnie was supposed to be quinn but and then it kind of follows them in their present day timeline actually meeting and then a bunch of different other scenarios and times in their lives where they've been kind of like right place wrong time or opposite not really knowing the other one is there the pacing in this one was off so the first half i thought went really well and quick and I was invested in the characters. And I was really interested to see where the romance was going, but then the romance took so long to develop in the second half and the payoff just wasn't there. The banter was like cringy. I don't know, it was weird towards the end. And then it just felt like it was slogging. Like, I was like, what am I reading this for anymore? So I ended up giving this three stars. I am not going to keep it even though I really do like the little stars on the back. So another five books off the book of the month shelves and read off of the book of the month shelves but i will be keeping these three white horse love on the brain and things we do in the dark and i will be donating or little free library or pangoing these two right here and with that that is the end of episode three of my book of the month backlist challenge which i'm honestly so pumped about the momentum is good the reads this month were really great i'm gonna take tomorrow off from thinking about book of the month and we will get back to it later this week i will choose the next five books and i'll see you in the next episode thank you so much if you are watching if you have subscribed to my channel from this series or from any of my other videos if you're interested there are some cards that are going to come up on the screen in a second here please go watch something else and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.